Good morning and welcome to day two of the EMB Youth Dance Summer Intensive. Today's class will be taught by Naomi Cook. Naomi is a dance artist, rehearsal director and arts consultant. As a performer, Naomi danced extensively in the UK and toured internationally. As a rehearsal director and teacher, she has worked in vocational and professional settings. Naomi is now based in Belgium where she will be teaching from today. Today's class will be a contemporary technique class with elements of release and some creative exploration. Now for the health and safety bit, remember to practice safely, so be really aware of the space that you're in, uh, cautious of things around you, plants, furniture, etc. and also think about the floor that you're dancing on. You can adapt wherever you need to, to fit in with your space, and also to fit in with your experience. Um, if you have any injuries, maybe you don't practice today, but you can drop back in with us at a later date, because these videos will be up online uh, in the future. So without further ado, let's head over to Naomi. Over to you, Naomi. Thanks, Richard. Uh, so welcome to all those joining my class today. Um, it's great to have you here. Um, today I'd like to um, help you work on your movement quality. Um, so uh, working on your movement quality as you work through exercises. Um, we're going to do that in three ways. Um, firstly, we're going to work on gravity. Um, we're also going to think about the flow of movement. And thirdly, we're going to use your creativity. Um, don't worry, we'll explain it um, as we go along um, during the class. It should all become clear. Um, I know a lot of you taking part might be um, still in a frustrating situation um, with the space and the time that you have for dancing. Um, but uh, first of all, well done for getting this far, for being here, taking part. Um, and just as you go through the exercises, um, take your time to, um, to work it out for yourself. Um, I'll be giving options, so um, you should have lots of um, things to choose from. We're going to start with some warm-up exercises. Um, and then a couple of e bigger exercises where we'll have a chance uh, for you to work um, on a few creative choices, a few creative ideas. So uh, let's get started. Just going to do um, a few articulations um, before we do a cardio warm up. So find a good space for you um, into a parallel position, the feet underneath the hips, the shoulders over the hips and a long spine. So you've got the top of your head gently reaching towards the ceiling and you've got the feet firmly in the ground. So just take a moment to be aware of the floor underneath you. That will also help you um, as you make decisions of how you move on your floor, whatever it is. So you're really aware underneath your feet of the floor connected down to the ground and reaching up towards the sky. You've got your belly button drawing towards your spine to hold your centre in. The shoulders are nice and broad, so you're going to imagine you've got jets of water out the side of um, your shoulders. One one way, one the other way, so you've really got this sense of open. Belly button drawing in, wide shoulders up, down to the ground. Great. You're just going to really easily and um, move the head from side to side. So really just go with as much range as you have as you start the class. So only as far as it feels easy. And then we'll go with the ear towards the shoulder. Stay nice and long in the spine to support you. Side to side. Gradually easing. And then that last one, you're going to continue it down to a circle. So the nose is going to do a big circle. Again, really thinking of keeping the neck nice and easy to do it for. So we're going to circle twice one way. And if you want to include the upper body a little bit, that might also help you wake up the neck. Keeping it easy. Two circles. And back to facing forward. We're going to do a few plies. We're going to bend in our parallel position, knees over toes. So really going straight forward over this train track. Parallel feet. As we bend, we're going to keep thinking about spine growing longer. But we're also going to start to become aware of the weight of the pelvis as it goes down and up. As we let gravity take us closer to the floor. Soft knees, soft ankles. Keep that belly button drawing in. Keep those shoulders nice and open. Great. And then we're going to circle the wrists. 
reach the fingertips up to the sky. This time you can let your shoulders really come up to your ears. Lengthen the waist, find lots of space, and then gradually lower the shoulders down. Keep the fingers reaching up. Keep the waist nice and long. And let the lower back, if you can, just think of the lower back just dropping down towards the floor. So I'm not arching my lower back, but really letting that lower back, back be soft as I draw it in my belly button. And shake it out. We'll just do that once again. So we'll circle the wrists up. Reach the fingertips up. Long waist. Maybe a little bit of tension as you reach up. And then soften a little bit. Let the shoulders drop down. Keep the fingertips reaching up. Long, long, long. Lower back dropping down. And here maybe you just think, have you shifted your weight right back onto your heels? Or are you really forward forward on your toes? And just see if you can kind of rock back and forward a bit and find somewhere in the middle so you really feel the full weight of your body um, in, under the feet. And then shake it out. Stretch the legs, so push down into the floor, lengthen the spine. Then we're just going to transfer the weight, so we'll transfer onto the left leg and circle the right ankle. Keep the centre, shoulders, long spine, and just ease into the ankle. Circling, and then transfer. You're also getting a sense of what it feels like to stand on that one leg. Maybe you have a bit more sense of gravity pulling you down, because you can really feel the weight on that one supporting leg. So let the pelvis be right over that supporting foot. And we'll circle both legs. Don't worry if you're a bit wobbly, we're just finding our balance today. And then feet down. And then give it a shake. Good, okay, a little cardio warm up to get the heart rate going. Um, so starting again in parallel, we're going to do six shifts from side to side. We're going to think of the pelvis, the way the pelvis is being a U shape. So we go down and up, and we just let the other leg follow. We do that six times, five, six, we drop the head and we drop the pelvis down, touch the floor, and we come back up. So we're really letting the head and the um, tailbone and the pelvis be heavy. Really simple as we touch the floor. Here we go. Four, and two, and three, and four, and five. You can just let the arms kind of swing naturally. Six, down, and up. We do that four times. Then we're going to lunge to the side. It's as if you're reaching for something. I'm going to reach for my, for my notes over here. You can open the foot a little bit so you don't have to stay in parallel because we're twisting a lot at the beginning of the class. Might be a bit much on the knee. So twist down. And then we're going to reach up to the on a straight leg. This time I'm reaching for something up from the ceiling. So I'm reaching down. And I'm thinking of softening my knees, softening my hip joint, so I'm getting nice and low as I warm up. Um, and just letting my spine respond. So I'm twisting and I let my spine respond so that as I move from side to side, I'm starting to twist the body. So we've got seven. One, and two, and three, and four and five, and six, and seven, join your feet together, other way, down, and up, and down, and up, so the movement goes right through to the fingertips, through the spine, seven, and join, we do that again, so we end up doing it four times, so we've done the shifts with our U shape, we've done our twists, our lunges, seven sets, then we've got four snakes to the side, so I'm thinking of starting with the top of my head, down, and up, and I let the body respond again, so I really bend low here so that the head can be the, a nice big pathway. So again, we're just warming up, we're just things easy into the movement. So we've had four shifts, four sets of twists, four snakes, and the final thing we're going to do, we're going to circle the shoulders, circle the arms, swing through, and we do two little jumps in parallel. Shoulders, and circle, and through, and jump, and jump. Circle, and we do it four times. Fourth time, just use it to warm up. So soften the joints. You can kind of get a good juicy bend there. And don't mind if you go forward and a little bit to really get into it. You'd have to stay to it okay. Okay, so shifts, twists, snakes, and shoulders and arms. Just remember, if you don't have much space, you can really take all your shifts really low and don't travel them so far. So I don't have to travel very far, but I can still think of that U shape 
with the pelvis. If you do have a space, you can really shift it out. Here we go with the music. to articulate the movement a little bit more, really start to think about um, the space in the body, so I'll talk about that as we go along, but also the flow of the movement. Um, so here we go. So we'll start now parallel, let the breath calm a little bit, remember your belly button to spine, your long spine, wide, down into the floor, and up towards the sky. We go forward with the right shoulder, Forward with the right elbow, back. We do a quarter of a circle, that's the movement that keeps going. As we tip over, we're imagining water pouring out of our ear. The movement keeps going, the water keeps pouring out the top of the head. And lower body stays still as I go around, that water's pouring. Then from here, I'm going to initiate the movement by lifting my left shoulder right up towards my ear. Then as I drop it, that initiates the next movement, which is the rebound and the suspension. I drop. And I curl up. So, uh, let's go from the beginning. That was quite a lot. 
Forward and backwards. Elbow and backwards. Quarter circle so that I pour out the side of my head and my ear. Go around to the other side. I'm going to tilt so my hips stay nice and uh, strong. Lift up the shoulder and I drop here. As I drop the weight of the shoulder, the weight goes into my pelvis, which gives me a really nice deep here. So up and drop. The movement continues. Suspension, suspension, so don't give it all the way straight away. And then we drop. And here we refine that heavy head, heavy pelvis from earlier. I'm not going all the way to the floor though, I'm just here. And then I curl up through the vertebra, find my neutral spine, and facing forward, obviously. To go on the other side. Shoulder and shoulder, and elbow and elbow. Quarter, pouring out of the top of the head, the water keeps pouring. So that movement's really continuous. From here, we have a little um, end of phrase, because then I can start the movement again, and I drop, find that weight in the pelvis, that suspension, drop the head in the pelvis, and I curl up nice and smooth. Okay? And um, I'll do that with some counts, so then we can do it um, with some music afterwards. So I have one and two, three and four. Five pouring, six pouring, seven pouring, eight. Reach and drop. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do that right and left in parallel. Five, six, here we go. And shoulder, and shoulder. Elbow and elbow, quarter turn with the elbow, around we go, shoulder and drop, over and suspend, drop, I turn up, really smoothly to go forward, keep that centre strong, and back, quarter to the side, pouring from the top of the head, and shoulder keep going, let the movement keep going in that continuous quality. There we go. Good. That was our little warm up for that. Because we're going to do it again. If you've just got used to the movement and you want to do it exactly the same, fine. Um, if you want to add a little something, um, after we've lifted our shoulder, dropped all the way over here, suspension, suspension, um, instead of just dropping down here, I'm going to drop and straight away, I'm going to think of the top of the head and the tailbone reaching away from each other so that two ends of the spine into my tabletop. I'm showing you side, but you'll be facing me. Then we drop the head over. If you need to bend the knees a bit, you can. If not, just keep them nice and long. And then we bend to curl up. Okay, so let me do that again. I'll do it facing me this time. So shoulder reaches up, drop, suspension, and out, drop. Curling up. Okay? So we'll do it right and left, right and left, so four times. We can either do it without the tabletop or with the tabletop. I'll just show you one more time the timing for the tabletop and I'll do it with the other arm. So, got it. Forward and backward. Forward and backward. Quarter to the side. Round we go. One and two. Three, four, and five. Drop six, curl seven, eight. So it's quite dynamic going out into that tabletop. Okay, let's do that um, with some music. Quarter circle to the side, let the head drop to the other side, shoulder, 
and drop into the pelvis. Big deep in there and drop and out. And belly up and left. Keep the belly button drawing in, stabilizing you. Pouring round, pouring round and shoulder. Go through the suspension this time. Over. And drop and out. And belly up. Well done. It's a bit of water if you need to. That's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Well done. Even if you did it without the tabletop, there's a lot of work um, with the use of gravity there in the pelvis and the head. So. And hopefully you begin to feel really warm. Excuse me, I was looking at my notes there instead of you. Um, some plies and a bit more leg work. Um, so we're going to be thinking about um, when we do it in parallel in first, we're working in a lunge going backwards, and when we're in second, we'll just be staying in this space. So you can't need enough space to stand in second. If you don't have much, keep it nice and um, narrow, but the main thing is if you can, if you've got any long space, or if you've got a bit more space this way, you can always face the diagonal, so just so you can do a lunge. But I'll give options anyway, um, if that's difficult. Here we go. So it starts a bit calmer. We bend and we stretch. The right arm comes up. Really think strong in the back. Bend and up. We have two more plies, so bend and stretch. At the same time, we have a little bounce in the legs and we're going to swing in the arms. So the arms and the legs are kind of echoing each other. So bend, and this is strong in the back. This is a stayed plie. Then we let the legs bounce. Think of that weight in the pelvis that we just found in the previous exercise. If you can, the arms keep going. So that's a real continuous moment there. And we come up. So that's a grand plie. Stay nice and strong in the centre come to our arms in second. You can just do a grand plie and come back up. If you want to work on your tabletop again, that we just did in the previous exercise, I'll show you from the side. One option is to go into that grand plie, and then from here, the fingers are going to lead, and they're going to um, take a pathway along the sides of the body as you tip into your tabletop. So they've gone down the side of the body. So instead of here, in the side of the body, they're along here. And then the fingers just lead again to go down and out. Okay, so that was grand plie, fingers lead along the body as we find that tabletop and up. If you want to stick with your grand plie, that's definitely enough work anyway. You just go down and up. If anyone doesn't want to do a grand plie, you can also just do a nice deep um, demi, that's fine. So we've got two demis, two demis with the swing. Sorry, that was a bit quick. And we keep going into the grand plie. I'm going to do the version with the tabletop. Into the tabletop and up. Then from here, the palms are going to find each other in front of us. So they're going to, um, like we've got magnets on the palms, they're going towards each other. And then uh, your right hand is going to brush along the left arm towards the back. So I'm quite making this length here. But instead of placing the arm there, I'm going to throw it. And it's going to have a rebound. So the rebound is really that circular movement here. So I throw the movement and it rebounds. Other arm, I throw it and it rebounds. At the same time, I'll just keep on the diagonal for you. I'm going to send the leg out into a lunge. And it's really at the same time as I drop the weight into the arms, I drop the weight into the plea and I'm going nice and deep and send the leg back. So I'm going back, front together, back, front together. And you'll be facing me for that. Um, your leg is going out behind you, so if you need to do it in a different angle to have space, that's fine. Um, as I said, if you do not have space anywhere to do a long lunge, you can just keep it bent. So I can still do the movement and just go down and keep the legs bent. If the arms are also a problem, you can throw it back and it can come back the same way. You've still got that nice dynamic throw and rebound, throw and rebound. Okay? So I'll just give you a moment to work out which version you're doing. Long legs, short legs, um, circular rebound or back the way you came. And again, if you don't have space in front, you can always just keep it here. Elbows in, that's quite nice. Or back. Lots of options. Okay, so you've had a little think about that. Let's do it on the left with your choices that you've made. Bend 
and stretch. Bend and stretch. With the rebound, soften the ankles, heavy in the pelvis, we keep going. Head reaching towards the sky as we go down to helpless. Fingertips reach back or you just come back up in your grand plie. And this is quite quick, the arms have to find each other quite quickly to do our lunge. Okay? Then we're going to do it in turn out. And um, same thing. Uh, beginning is the same. You all the way down to our grand plie. Stay in the turn out for your flat back. If that feels a bit awkward, you can stick with the, just the grand plie, even if you did the tabletop in parallel. And then here, again, the palms are going to find each other. And we're still doing a chance of weight, but we're um, staying in turn out. Back and forward. Really keep the turn out as you do that. Okay? So we're going to do right left in parallel, right left in turn out. Here we go. Drop. Continuous movement. 
all fours or just the under fours, wherever you can get to. And um, we're going to do a press up. So different options. If you're out in a press up position, that's fine. You can go down and up. You can just stay there if you want. That's good work as well. And um, I know we're thinking of continuous movement, but even if you're just pushing into the floor, lifting the belly button, that's still movement. So you can think of continuous movement um, as part of the phrase. You could um, put the knees down and go into a press up and up. If you're already in this shortened position, probably just stay there and again think of then pushing down into the floor with the hands, lifting the belly button. Okay? Let's go from the beginning, so that was a lot of explaining. So we go up, gather the water, down through the head and the pelvis, out, it keeps going, whatever your version of the press up is, keep it going. Here we can let the knees gently touch the ground. So not clunking down, but they're really going to be part of that smooth pathway. Think of water just gently touching the riverbed and flowing back as the hip, hips go to the heels. Obviously, if you've already put your knees down, um, you don't need to do it again. You'll already be there. And then you can just join us as we put our heel back. So you're facing me. Then from here, we're going to unpile and move the hips going. Once I've reached, really reached that new position, I don't stop. I let the weight pour out of the right side. So we're only going to do one side, but we'll imagine it's right, because it'll help us with a few directions. So we're going to go towards the right side of the body. The weight goes down into that right bottom and hip. And as I pour the weight down, pull that water down to that side, it sends the toes out in a big circle to face the front. So let's go from the beginning. Gather the water and pour it down through the pelvis and the head. Out, down, keep the movement continuous and smooth, belly button to spine, knees down, hips down, belly up, curling up, and it keeps going, sending the toes out. Great. As I come back and I place the weight onto two sides of my sit bones, so sitting on both bottoms, I'm going to keep the weight going, so that it, the water pours one way and the other. So a wave one way and a wave the other. If you've got space, you can let the water pour out of the ear into the floor and let the movement travel along. So actually, the weight pours into one side and then to the other. If you don't have much space to the sides, you can just think of the water out of the ear like we did earlier. And there's no need to move that arm, that's absolutely fine. You'll still get that wave. That second time, so we've gone left and right. We come back up, then here, the tide turns and the tide brings our feet in cross-legged. And there's a wave that comes over the back. So think of that back surface of the body. The wave comes over so that you end up um, kind of falling, tipping towards me. As the fingertips trace a big circle on the floor, as the water comes over your head, the circle keeps going in the hands, the hands continue along the floor to they find the knees and you're going to bring the knees up, okay, nice and easily. Let's go back to we've just um, done press up, knees, hips. We uncurl, we pour to the right, send the legs round, pour to the left, pour to the right, up we come, the tight hand brings our feet back in, don't worry which legs in front, it doesn't matter. Wave with a big circle, hands to the knees, we bring the knees up, so I'm like this, so I was in cross-legged and I brought the knees up. From here, my hands are going to go down my thighs, so that I've got the whole leg to brush along, and that's me creating a big wave here, so I splash the water up, and then the water's going to come down in drops from the fingertips, from the ear, down to the floor, but I'll just explain that bit in a minute. So, we're doing the circle round, okay? Here, we go left and right and tight hands into cross legged. Big circle with a wave that comes over the back. Draw the knees in, down the thighs, brush the water, and then the drops of water out the fingertips, out the ear. Here. I know there's quite a lot of detail, um, especially if you're also working out the chair, the table, whatever, the dog, I don't know. Um, but we're going to do it quite a few times, so you'll, you'll get there. Um, and if you're finding it easy to pick up the movement, then you can already be working on the points. 
So, um, water comes down and drops from the fingers, the ears, as I contact with the floor, as I connect to the floor with my hands, my hands are kind of just diagonally back, so next to my bottom, my hips, just a little bit behind me. As my weight goes into those hands, I can draw the feet towards me. So now we've got in a kind of crouched, twisted position. I'll show it in a different way in a minute. And I'm going to keep going, keep going, keep going. So I'm turning away from you, you'll be turning um, uh, clockwise. Twisting, twisting, twisting. I'm trying to go all the way around. I have to take my hand off to keep going. And it opens, it opens, it opens. I get to this point where one arm's up, so it'll be your right arm. And that right arm's going to help you come up really smoothly, part of that journey of the river. Okay? So I'll just show you that twisty bit at the end. So I rush along. You'll be dropping down to your right, okay? So you're dropping down to your right. Feet come in. I transfer my weight so I'm on my feet and my hands. I twist round. So I'm kind of pivoting. I can't go any further, so I have to lift my right arm and it draws me up to the top. If that's a little bit much with whatever you're dealing with, you can drop down to the right, put the hands down, come into crouch, transfer your weight, walk your hands in front of me in a crouch position and you can just curl up. That's fine. Let me do that once more. So a simple version, or necessary version, depending on what's going on. Drop down, legs in, transfer the weight, and I just roll up. That's absolutely fine. Just if you keep it part of that river of movement, that water flow, um, it'll be really valid in that exercise. Okay, it's quite a few things to choose from, so we're going to go through it again and think about choices you're making for your space. Okay? Ah, gather and down and out to press up, down and up. Knees, bottom, turning up. Up and dropping to the right, center toes round, to the left, to the right, tide turns, wave over your back, knees in down the thighs, brush the water, drops of water to the right, bring the feet in, keep it going, like a little whirlpool, it keeps going, 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 it keeps going. And you can do a few steps just to find. Go once more. Okay, so let me just explain a little bit more. Um, we'll do that a couple of times with the music and just try and um, get to a point where you can do it nice and smoothly so the movement can keep going and as little as possible looking at me um, or just now and then to just check the movement. Okay, so we'll do that once, twice with the music. Here we go. Few times 
um, so you can get it really, really smooth. Um, so what we're going to do now is, um, well, I will tell you, but I'm going to get my notes just to double check what I'm saying. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to think about um, direction. Um, so especially when we're doing online work, um, we're thinking a lot towards the camera. Um, and even when we're working in the studio or on stage, it can often be quite forward facing. So um, I'd like to try and help us open up the space a bit so that we can feel like we're performing a bit more so that we're thinking kind of all around us with our body. Um, so I've made a few really simple examples of direction changes in this exercise, which does kind of face the front a lot. Um, at the end of the class, I'll repeat these examples and you'll be able to have a go at making a few yourselves. Um, but for now, we're going to work with me doing my examples, and um, so you get to um, just have a go at that. Um, so the first change of direction is really, really simple. It's right at the beginning. So standing up, usually we start here, we're being stood all, all of us. Um, I'd like to find a new starting position, so facing any, any direction. So you kind of need to find somewhere where you've got space. All you're going to need to be able to do is step into that original starting position, okay? So um, don't go too far away. You just need to be able to get there in one or two steps. So I'm going to stand here. But with that first gather, I'm going to step in and out. Um, so I'm kind of entering the space from somewhere different. I'm creating a new energy coming through. I go out. Uh, I'll just give you a moment to decide where you're, you're working from, okay? So, just have a little go. Doesn't have to be the same as mine, just to clarify. So you can do what I did, which is coming from the diagonal. I'm going to flat. But where are the flat points? So you gather, once you're there, we go up. This bit's the same, so we go down and up. Oh, let's press us back onto the heels. Up we come. Pull to the right. Second change of direction. Um, instead of stepping into a different direction, I'm going to manipulate the movement a little bit. So usually we're pouring the weight down and sending the feet out to the front. This time, I'm going to send the feet kind of the direction they already are, so out to the side. And my body's going to join the feet to face the side. And for the audience, that gives a completely different angle to the exercise. And for me, it's really making me think a bit differently about um, all the body what part of the body needs to be seen, what part of the body I'm aware of. So here, as I drop, this is the moment when I can come back to my original. So I twist around and come back to our starting position. However, we're going to do it twice through and I want to find a second starting position. So as you come up there at the end, you're going to find a new place to start to then come in again together. So you don't have much many options, just do the same um, one as you did the first time, okay? But I'm going to say I'm going to start uh, here this time, so directly facing back, Ooh, sorry. And I'm going to step in, and I think I'm going to twist this time by going, so I'm stepping, stepping backwards instead of forward, just to change the feeling. So up, press up, up, down, knees, back. Again, I'm doing it to the right side, so to the right, legs out, body joins, Tip one way, tip the other way. So you're going left and right, just like we have been doing. So it's away from the camera, towards the camera, because you won't be able to pop in this time. Feet come in, cross legged, big wave over the back, hands to knees, arms down the legs, rush towards the camera. And then you can just finish that second one facing the front, okay? So just to clarify, to make sure that's clear, um, you're finding a new starting position that you can then step in together, going through the exercise, and then we're sending the legs out um, to your left, um, to your left, yeah. Joining the rest of the exercise is facing the side, um, and then you use that last whirlpool to come up. And you can either come up to your new starting position, the same one, or if you want to find a new, new starting position, so a second version, you can go into that and then step into your gather again. So I'll be doing my new starting position, but yours will be different. So you don't have to copy my, um, my starting position. 
Um, let's try that all together. Um, so we'll all be standing as we do it in different places. So maybe you can have this sense of we're all kind of in the same space. We're coming in from different angles, different directions into the space to do the exercise together. Um, and then we're all turning to the side together. Okay, it's not just you, it's a whole, whole group of people. Okay, let's do that. Five through. So first of all, finding your new start position. I'll give you a chance to get there. Down and up. Knees, hips, keep the movement continuous, that river quality. Down, body joints. We're facing side away from me and towards me. Tight hands, feet in, wave. Knees up, down the legs and crunch. And into that wild pull. I'm going to give us time here. That arm brings you up, find your second starting position. So you've got time here. Five, six, ready, and gather. And down. And up, keep it going, keep it going. Knees, hips, curling up, slow. Toes to the side, the body joints. Away from you. And pull the water out the top of the head. Tight hands, wave. Knees and brush. And droplets. Well, pull all the way up, back to our end. Good, well done. Okay, so I hope you managed to find um, kind of a different sense of doing it then with the change of direction. Um, so at the end, as I said, I'll come back to just explain, um, re-explain that so you can have a go making it your own. Okay, final exercise um, and with another little creative idea for you um, to go away with. Um, so we're going to work um, on the idea of turning in and turning out the body. And we're going to combine it with uh, a bit of leg work, so some tondus and grand Um just to, to work for those legs. Uh, but you'll see it all links, it all links. Okay, I'll teach you the exercise. Okay, so back to our parallel, back to our um, forward facing. But this exercise is going to kind of build on that idea of direction um, and how that makes us move, the quality of our movement um, by changing direction a bit. So just be ready for that. We're going to start and turn out. I said power, but it's not. Just turn out. So, first position. Arms nice and strong, like we've been working. And we're going to use our left leg. So, we're going to do four tondus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh dear, I'm doing it all wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lift the leg. So, don't think of lifting it, hooking it up, but really just floating that toe out nice and long. We're going to turn in. And out, in, and out. Okay, what's going in, what's going out? We're keeping the spine nice and long, centre nice and strong, so we can really let um, the weight of the leg release in the hip to allow that turn in. So we're letting the weight of the leg do the work for us and then to refine that turn out. The supporting leg really stays doing what it's doing, so it's turn out. As I release in, I can let the hips, um, I can let the body turn a little bit. I'm going to think of now being kind of being in the parallel and then in the turn out, but actually the legs just stay in the same place. So basically, we don't want to let the knee go all over the place, so we just stay over the toe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and in and out, in and out, and. So on the and, I'm going to go up to fifth. I'm going to be facing from the side. So you'll be turning to your left. 
away from me to the side. My right arm comes up, the right arm's going to drop, so I'll change the front, it'll drop, and I'll shift back into parallel, and I've got three shifts, like we did in that very first cardio exercise. Um, so we've got, and top arm up, and I shift away from the camera, towards, away, and then I'm going to step back towards the camera, and the leg is going to go in, and out into a big second position. So in, parallel facing the camera, out, I'm sliding, so if I was to do it facing you, I'd go really low. So I'm low that clear and I shift and try and get as low as possible as I transfer the weight through into the second. So I've gone in and out with the legs. At the same time, the elbow is going to come over the top, so I'm going in with that lower arm and out. So I'm kind of doing a figure of eight. It's basically a figure of eight, down and over. But I'm really thinking the quality of the movement is I'm turning in my body and out. So I really let the upper body get involved as well. Here, it was really just a release in that one part of the body in the leg. Um, here, after my shift, 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 in and out, I'm really thinking the whole body. It's like it's kind of monster thing. You know, a big mouth closing it over. In and out. Oh yeah, I've done it wrong. In and out. I've done it wrong, but I'm going to go with it. So in, into that second, I'm going to stay low to do two big steps round into parallel. So you're kind of always working in the same direction. So I turn this way to the left. When I do my two big steps down, I keep going in the same direction. One, two, to face back. So kept going the same way. From the beginning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and in, and out, in, and out, and away from the camera, towards the camera, away from the camera, in, and out, two steps to join, to end the phrase, you just do a big curve, in and out. It's kind of a classic curve, back curve, but I want to just really have that sensation of in and out, so... We're going to fold the shoulders in and really show the backs of the arms as we do it in and out. Again, you're thinking about the mouth, that turning in as well. And one moment that might be a bit tricky when you're watching um, the camera, especially if it's quite small, so I'll just show it again. We've lifted the leg here, you rise up to the side, so to your left, that back arm, so your left arm has gone up over the head. It does a big circle towards me, and then as it swings out, it swings with the shift as I shift away. So if I was to show you from the front, it would be up, shift, and shift, and shift, in and out, step, run, in and out. So that's kind of, so you can see it the other way. But I'm going this way, so let's do it this way, so facing towards me, in and out, in, and out, and shift, and shift, and shift, towards me, in, out into that second, big step round, and in, and out. You're just struggling with space, up, as you go into a second, instead of going towards, keep it going there, up, you go into a second, and then just step back here, for the in and the out, that's fine. So I'm just going to give you a moment to work that out, whether you're doing the space or just the exercise, and then there's a little bit more. So I'll just give you a moment. Okay. So as you're working it out, just keep thinking of the weight in the pelvis that we've been working, especially as we go from this high position to drop with the weight of the arm, the weight of the pelvis, even here I'm going down with my pelvis, down with my pelvis, as I'm thinking about in and out, okay? It's really the whole body working. Okay, let's do that from the top, now you just had a chance to think and then I'll keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and in, and out, in, and out, and one, two, three, four, Six, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. From here, go on that one with your right leg. Go on that one with your left. Or you might just want to think brush and in, brush and in to give that really nice down and one. So we've done right, left. Um, and then we're going to do one more in and out with the curve. In 
like we did right at the beginning of the class. So the weight of the hands drops the pelvis, drops the head down into the floor and up. At the beginning of the class, um, we did in our cardio, we touched the floor and down and up. Same thing, but I'm going to let the movement, if you have space, you can let the movement, and if your carpet's not too bony, you can let the hands slide along. So a bit like we did on the floor when we went down and out. So you go down first, down first, and then let the movement slide out. And up. If you don't have space, just down, weight into the hands. And up. So this end is really to think all that work on the weight and the gravity down to the floor with the knees like that. So let's add that on. Let's go from the beginning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and in, and out, in, and out, and shift. Get low with the pelvis. And in, and out, and down, and in, and out, and right brush. Keep the back strong, left brush, in, and out, drop down, and up. Okay. Um, so it's quite quick from that shift round. So even if the speed is a bit difficult, if you're dealing with other things, keep the, stick, stick with the version that I mentioned earlier. So you um, in, and out into that second, and then just join to go in and out. That's absolutely fine. Um, but I'll do the other version for those of you wanting to go around in the circle. Okay, let's do it with some music. ideas for you to have a play with. and then do a little cool down, I think that's fine. Um, and if you do have time, uh, maybe you just want to write a few things down now, or you can always come back to it. Um, so the first um, thing was playing with direction. Um, so you can take the floor exercise and find, so that was the one that we were thinking about the river and the water flowing, and it started with the gather and down and the press up. So you can think about two more um, moments where you can change direction. I'll just remind you of mine. So my first one, I changed my starting position and then I stepped in um, instead of just starting on the spot. 
And then my second example was um, sending my legs out to the side and letting my body join instead of sending my legs around to the front. So the first one, I'm kind of adding a step to change the direction. The second one, I've manipulated the movement a bit. So maybe try and find at least one example when you use a movement and change it a bit so that it, the movement keeps its essence. So it keeps the kind of, yeah, the essence of the movement, but you, it, you, you manipulate it a bit so that it changes direction. And especially because you won't be needing to look at the camera as much, you can really go to wherever you want. So you'll have my two moments and your two moments. So the whole exercise should kind of be a bit more 3D, a bit more 360. Um, and again, maybe you can imagine, okay, everyone's got a way to do these creative ideas. Everyone's having a play. So we're all coming into the space into our own spaces, but from different directions. We're all doing the same movement, but we're, we're playing with that space. We're facing out into an audience that's more than just in front of us. Um, so that's for the floor work exercise. Um, the second thing is thinking about this idea of turning in and turning out. Um, so I gave you this quite set, structured exercise um, with its tondus and its grand mammals. Um, but we had these moments of turning in. We isolated the legs, turning it out. We use the back turn and in and out, and we have this kind of, it was the elbow and the upper arm, but it was really thinking of the whole body coming in as we turned in the leg and the arm at the same time. So I'd like you to just have a little go um, at improvising. So think of this idea of in and out, and just have a little play. Think about different parts of the body, how you can play with the in and the out, not just the literal in and out of a joint, but also that feeling of, in and out, that feeling of that monster closing and opening its mouth. How can you translate that into different um, body parts? Have a play. Maybe you just want to see what comes up. Um, but if you find a few movements that you really like, maybe you can put them into a little phrase as well. You could add them on um, to the exercise, or you could create your own little, little phrase of turning in and turning out. And remember that the whole thing doesn't have to turn in and out. Maybe you can add a few really simple moments so that you, um, you've kind of got a contrast between something a bit more upright and then the in and out. Um, so there are your two, two things to play with. And um, let's all do a cool down, whether you're carrying on or not, um, so that we finish the class together. There we go. Um, we'll put some music on and we're just going to um, use our roll down exercise to cool us down. I've put a different music on so don't let it concern you. Just a bit more. So in parallel. Belly button drawing into the spine, just that last time, just to support you. But let the lower back really be soft. The back of the neck be soft. I'm just going to gently roll the shoulder forward and back, maybe letting the upper body take part as well. That quarter turn. And then we're just going to stay here. Other hand on the shoulder. And you can just gently draw that shoulder down, weight of the ear down towards the hand. Just as much as feels comfortable. Keep breathing. And then release that hand, circle round. Good, then we're going to reach up with the left shoulder, drop it down, soften the knees, big stretch over. And this time the other arm, the free arm, is going to wrap around the waist to give you a bit of an anchor. So you can stretch just a little bit more, opening the ribs, opening the waist, the shoulder, space around the shoulder. Think of anchoring that left leg down into the floor, away from that top arm. Drop down, heavy head. And you're just going to stretch the legs so the head goes towards the floor, the hips up to the sky. Stretch the legs as we hang over. Breathing into the back, bend and curl it up. And just see how that feels different from a few minutes ago. So we can go on the other side. Shoulder forward and back, elbow, and a quarter roll with this elbow, pouring down, other arm on the shoulder, head towards the floor, 
Thank you, Naomi, for a wonderful class. Now, don't forget, this week we have two classes a day. So this afternoon, we'll be joined by Gosha, who will be teaching a creative exploration class. We hope to see you then.